Hello, welcome to Living English. In today's episode, we'll look at words you can use to make plans and invite someone to your house. And we'll be looking at how to talk about the future and what is going to happen. Remember in our last episode of Sisters and Brothers, Anne told John, the private detective, about what happened to her brother. Today, she is at Sarah's office. Here's Sisters and Brothers. Very smooth. Good flavour too. It sells well in restaurants here. I think these will sell well in Singapore. Mm, the samples you sent me were very popular with our staff. Hmm. You seem to understand our taste in Singapore. Thank you. It's my job to know what my clients like. So, are you enjoying the city? Mm, it's very nice. What are you going to do tomorrow? I don't know. I'll probably stay in the hotel and relax. Why don't you come to lunch with us at home? Oh, thank you, but you have your family. Yes, and they want to meet you. We're going to have roast chicken, traditional Aussie food. Mm, sounds good. All right, I'll come. Great. What time? We eat at about one o'clock, so about 12.30. I'll show you the house. OK, thank you. I'll get my brother to pick you up. No, that's OK. I'll get a taxi. All right, then. But settled. <laughs> Let's look at how Sarah asks Anne about her plans. What are you going to do tomorrow? I don't know. I'll probably stay in the hotel and relax. Sarah asks, what are you going to do? Going to is used to talk about future plans. Repeat the phrase with the clip. What are you going to do tomorrow? Sarah invites Anne to her house. What are they going to have for lunch? Listen. We're going to have roast chicken, traditional Aussie food. They're going to have roast chicken. Let's practice going to. First, the question. What are you going to do tomorrow? Let's ask the question with different subjects. First, he. What is he going to do tomorrow? They. What are they going to do tomorrow? Now, let's look at the answer. Anne is going to relax. So she would say, I'm going to relax. You try answering the question. What are you going to do tomorrow? I'm going to relax. What is she going to do tomorrow? She's going to relax. What are we going to do tomorrow? We're going to relax. What are they going to do tomorrow? They're going to relax. There's another way of talking about the future, to use the word will. Listen again to what Anne says about her plans for tomorrow. What are you going to do tomorrow? I don't know. I'll probably stay in the hotel and relax. Anne says, I'll probably stay in the hotel. I'll is short for I will. This is another way of talking about the future. I will do something. Listen to see how many times you can hear I'll in this next clip. We're going to have roast chicken, traditional Aussie food. Mm, sounds good. All right, I'll come. Great. 
What time? We eat at about one o'clock, so about 12.30. I'll show you the house. OK, thank you. I'll get my brother to pick you up. No, that's OK. I'll get a taxi. So there were four wills. I'll come. I'll show you the house. I'll get my brother to pick you up. And I'll get a taxi. And as we've seen before on Living English, I will becomes I'll. So when do you use will and when do you use going to? Notice that all of these actions in the future are single actions. I'll get a taxi. I'll show you the house. We use will for a definite single action in the future. We use going to for less definite or longer actions. What are you going to do tomorrow? Now, let's look at how Sarah invites Anne to her house. Why don't you come to lunch with us at home? She says, why don't you come to lunch? She doesn't really want to know why Anne doesn't come. She wants Anne to come. She is inviting her to come. Practice with the clip. Why don't you come to lunch with us at home? Now try asking with some different invitations such as, come to dinner. Why don't you come to dinner? Try this chicken. Why don't you try this chicken? Go home. Why don't you go home? Ring me tomorrow. Why don't you ring me tomorrow? All of these are examples of making a suggestion. So if I say, why don't you ring me tomorrow, I want you to ring me tomorrow. I'll ring you tomorrow if you like. Hello, Michelle. Hello. What are we going to talk about today? Well, I've brought my calendar. So we can talk about days in the future. First, let's review the days of the week. You say them at home too. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Brenton, we need to make an appointment to discuss the program. When can we meet? When are you free? Well, I'm, I'm free today after this. Oh, uh, no, I'm seeing a friend today. What about tomorrow? Hmm. I'm busy tomorrow. I'm working. What about Wednesday? Mm, I'm sorry. I'm going out on Wednesday. What about Saturday? Hmm. Oh, no, on Saturday I'm going to do the shopping. Well, we can't meet this week. What about next week? Well, I'm very busy next week, but uh, I can see you on Monday. Monday it is. It's Monday today, so I'll see you next Monday. Next Monday in a week's time. Uh, mm. What time? Um, how about 10 o'clock? OK, I'll see you at 10 o'clock next Monday morning. That was very difficult. Let's look at how we talk about future dates. First, today. You would say, I'll see you today. Or, I'll see you later today. If it was in the afternoon, we could say, I'll see you this afternoon. Or, if it was in the evening, I'll see you this evening. Let's say today is Monday. If I can see you on Tuesday, I would say, I'll see you tomorrow. If I can see you on Wednesday, I could say, I'll see you the day after tomorrow. Or I could just say, I'll see you on Wednesday. We use on before the name of any day. And notice how the days have a capital letter. If our appointment is in the week we are in now, I would call it this week. 
But if it's next week, then I say, I'll see you next week. The same goes for the month. This month is the month that is happening now. Next month is the month after or the year. This year, next year. And if I want to say a particular month, I use in. I'll see you in July. I'll see you in December. And when we say a particular time, we use at. I'll see you at two o'clock. I'll see you at half past four. But if we want to say how far in the future the appointment is, we use in. I'll see you in 10 minutes. I'll see you in two hours. I'll see you in a week. I'll see you in a month. That sounds complicated, Michelle. Not really. We just have to remember whether to use on, at or in. Let's practice. I'll say a time and you say, I'll see you on, at or in that time. You try one, Brenton. OK. A week. I'll see you in a week. Perfect. Now you try at home. A month. I'll see you in a month. Six o'clock. I'll see you at six o'clock. January. I'll see you in January. Thursday. I'll see you on Thursday. Two years. I'll see you in two years. This afternoon. I'll see you this afternoon. That was a trick one. Remember, we can also use this before the words morning, afternoon, evening, week, month or year. We can say this year or next year, this week or next week and so on. And that's about all we have today, Brenton. But before we see the story again, there's one thing that I don't understand. Well, what's that, Michelle? Let's watch the end of the clip. I'll get my brother to pick you up. No, that's OK. I'll get a taxi. All right, then. But settled. <laughs> Why does Sarah want her brother to pick Anne up? Can't she walk? No, Michelle, he isn't really going to carry her. To pick someone up is to give them a lift in your car. Oh, are you going to pick me up for our meeting? No. Oh. That's all we have time for today. We'll see you next time when Anne goes to lunch at Sarah's house. And we meet Sarah's brother. Hope you can watch then and I'll see you on Monday. At, at 10 o'clock? Goodbye. Mm -hmm.